So I I prepared this one with uh, with eyes already on it. This is the a Dave Whitlock pattern. It's called the Near Enough Crayfish, and it's a little more finicky. But it's probably my favorite crayfish. I like to, when I can, I like to keep things simple. But I always make sure at the beginning of the bass season that I've got a couple of dozen of these ready to go because you do lose a lot of them. But this, this is th th this is my favorite crayfish, and I'll tie it, I'll tie it from this big down to something that small. Crayfish come in all different sizes, and depending on the time of year, depending on the maturity, they'll come in all kinds of different colors. This one I'm tying is going to be a fairly light colored um, crayfish, and you need you need some. Uh, Uniflex, some I like the silly legs. I'd rather it in brown, but if I don't have it, orange will do. Yeah, I want the I want the flecky, the flecky stuff though. You need some of this and a little bit of flashaboo. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tie in this this Uniflex. And this is this is representing all of the uh, the um, antenna and the breather stuff. That's scientific term, breather stuff, uh, on the uh, on the head of the crayfish. So these ones you want about the length. I just tied that in in, in, in one piece. You want these to be just slightly longer than the than the. Um, hook shank. So I'll tie those in and gauge it and just slightly longer than the hook or than the, the, the shank. Next I'm going to tie in a couple of these silly legs in the same manner. Sorry Rob, you said that's the uni, the uni there? Uniflex. Uh, uniflex, yeah. yeah. I discovered this. Um, there, there's a product that, if you look at the uh, if you look at the near enough crayfish online, um, he uses another another thing. But I discovered this uh, mainly making various nymphs and using it as a as a body wrap because it's really nice. It's very stretchy, uh, and you can really get a nice taper out of a out of a body with it. But I, I was doing a whole a whole bunch of um, mysis shrimp for a guy a couple years ago that was going to uh, um, the tropics, and I didn't have that stuff. And I'm looking at this and I'm thinking, geez, that's perfect because it's very animated. It's it's rigid enough that that it's it stays rigid, but it's also very lively as well. So for any of your any of your antenna stuff on crayfish, Uniflex is probably the most economical, <coughs> and it's available in the most colors. I'll tie this fly. In olives, um, the, the the light tan that I'm using here, uh, and the original pattern that, that Whitlock popularized was orange. Uh, he actually made a dubbing that's the near enough crayfish dubbing. That was his that was his favorite. Um, but if if you get into a dense population of crayfish, if you, even on this river when you're trout fishing, if you if you stand back and observe them. You'll see there is a wide, at any given time, there's a very wide variety of colors. And I know, I know it has to do with when they're spawning or shedding eggs. Um, it has to do when, with the, the, the variations have, have a lot to do with when they're, when they're soft and shedding their, their shells. But there's no, to me, there's no rhyme or reason to the color variation. So, I don't really care what color I'm using. I don't think that they're keying in on any one thing. I want them to be relatively natural. But as I said, if you if if you look at a dense population of crayfish, you're going to see, you know, through a spectrum, through, through from light tan to very very dark green, like like Ed shirt. Okay. So now these, I want them to be just a little bit shorter than the uh, than the. Antenna, don't cut the antenna, Rob. 
Um, and, and although it probably doesn't matter, I think the idea with, with having the varying lengths here is when it's in the water, they're going to move at different, uh, different styles and different, different rates. So when I tie in the, the flashaboo, I'm going to make that slightly longer than, than everything else. And this is what the original recipe prescribed, so I've sort of stuck with it. You know, it's that old, uh, if, it ain't, if it ain't broke. Don't fix it. So again, these are. Um, this is just representing all of the the antenna and the breathy stuff. Mm. Which apparently is the thing coming out. Yeah, that's the point. Like almost pinkish in color. Except the eyes with the head. Now the way it is. I'm going to make these slightly longer than the original Uniflex antenna, and that's that. And yes, Ed, to answer that question, the eyes on this fly are at the front, but they're not acting as eyes. Dave normally uh, painted his, his um, eyes to the same color that he was using, but I haven't found it makes a a big difference. This is this is mainly for weight and to keel it, okay. But he he normally took uh, uh, dipped them in in a in a brown. Um, <coughs> uh, if he was tying the brown color, he normally dipped them in a brown paint. And if you look at the uh, the commercially purchased patterns, there the, the eyes are always the same color as the fly. I, I haven't found it makes a, a big difference. I've used commercially bought eyes for, the, for, for both my saltwater uh, uh, shrimp and crayfish, but this is a very simple method of, uh, of making an eye. And I'll show you what I might bring these later. I'm sure you've already figured it out, but that's, that's all right. Don't worry about it. Sure. Don't worry about it. All I've done is just, is just taken a lighter to this and just let it ball up and if you move it back and forth it won't fall off to one side and it also darkens it up pretty good I do touch these with with a magic marker once I'm done just to make them stand out a little bit more but I want these to be about half not quite half the length of the uh, of the um, hook and I'm also going to bend them over So that I get a bit of a crease in them so that they, they flare out and now here's another little trick I don't recommend using your teeth but if you take it <clears throat> and just sort of bite bite into it a little bit this stuff is so slick it could it could pull out when you're tying it so that just gives it a little little texture um, for the for the thread to grab so I'm gonna put those on an angle like that that's probably a little longer than I'd like but what the hell and I'll start tying that in I want them down each side obviously and once it's in place there you can just sort of increase it out a little bit more So make sure that's nice and secure. I'm not worried about building up, building up mass on the body. In fact, I, I want to build it up. I'll take the other one and get the get the length about right. And again, just giving a little bit of little bit of texture. He's a little wonky. He's got one eye is slightly longer than the others, but nobody's perfect, right? Nothing in nature is perfect. start to squeak. There's that birdie again. I'm going to fix that right now. I don't need your shit, Williams. <laughs> My bobbin squeaks, Mike. And Dave took the piss out of me last time I was using it and had a little bird 
come up on the uh, on the uh, so one of my one of my little antenna there just kind of got away from me so I'm just reorienting it to the side because the fish will pick up on that shit yeah. Have you been lying to me this whole time? Yes, I did. <laughs> so anyway, what I was what I was driving at was um, the They're original. They're very soft too. They're like uh, no? they don't have a shell. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's very soft. What I was driving at was the idea that, and I got this from tying mice's shrimp. That was another guy. Yeah, and trout too. The idea that the the eggs of the of a of a spawning female will show up. In the shell, and so what? The the original pattern you see called that on the for too rough. yeah yeah, the original pattern called for um, the same dubbing. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to build up a little dubbing ball, as, as you'll see, and this is going to help prop the uh, prop the the claws out. But I'm doing that. I'm doing this in a in a in a slightly different color, and again, it's just that little. That little trigger that I always like to to say there's no there's no point in, in just tying a tying a fly and and hoping for the best if you can get something that that might trigger a uh, a strike whether it's the use of legs rubbers but whatever then I think I think that it's important so now what I'm doing is I'm going to use this this um, tan hen hackle. For my claws, we want to get this curving out or slightly up. It's this is this is the most finicky part of this fly, but there's another important part here. Um, <clears throat> when I tie this in, I'm going to leave a substantial amount of the quill exposed, like about an eighth of an inch, because when I tie this in. If I tie it in, if I if I bring it right into the to the to the barbules here, and I start to tie it in, when I put my dubbing on, it's going to cause those first few barbules to get all buggered. So I'm going to expose. I'm going to leave exposed a substantial amount of the quill, and I'm going to try and get this. Normally, what I would do here, if I was using a uh, a heavier quill, if some, and you know, I don't know if it's if it's the maturity of the bird or what time of year it was harvested or what. The quills will be quite thick, and you can actually take you can actually take your your uh, hackle pliers and kind of flatten them. If you just if I just take my hackle pliers, put them. I hope you can all see that somewhat. Put them along here, and only I'm only going to apply about about 40 percent, and just draw that out. It'll flatten that quill. So in theory, that quill should sit almost perfectly. I'm a little reluctant to do it with these ones because they're not they're not a real heavy quill, and and then have it break. So I'm gonna I'm gonna attempt to, to put these in just like this, and. I'm going to take it, I'm just going to make that a little bit shorter. I'm going to start it in on the side here. A soft wrap around it. And I'm just, I'm just, there, like that's almost perfect. That's pretty good right there, it, as long as it stays there. Now that's sticking out considerably, um, but when I dub the body, it's going to uh, it's going to uh, uh, get more swept back. Cut more off, and get this one going in the same the same line. Again, just a, a soft wrap. I hope for the best. See, sometimes it sometimes it just works out. Yeah. Very seldom, but it looks like I get a lot of movement on it. I'm pretty happy with that. It just looks like an orchid. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's gonna put a new sign in the window. Rob he a fly builder. <laughs> now I can take this, I'm gonna take this right into that dubbing ball. 
okay? Those might be a little bit longer. I'm gonna I'm gonna cut them so that I get the the actual clock back. But now we're gonna be doing a, a hackle through this. Good color. Just bear my ends. And I'm going to tie this in by the tips. Yeah, it's one of those things. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, I got lots. Try and get that, try and get the natural curvature there just to keep the critics quiet. But uh, this grizzly hackle? This is a tan grizzly hackle. You gave this to me, Ed. I know. And again, secure it. And here I'm just using the uh, natural hair's ear. It has it has good good modeling. And again, I'm not worried about being too light. I can put I can it, you can always I say I'm not worried about being too light. Keep, always keep in mind when you're dubbing. You can always add dubbing. You can always go back and add a little bit and fill in gaps. Um, you 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 can't take it off once it's once it's on the fly. So if you see here, I'm just when I when I got that in there. See, I got that big ugly gap there. I'll just fill that in with a little bit, a little bit more, just to just to even it out. So you don't use wax because you're just showing this for uh, I don't I don't I don't very often use wax at all, okay. Chris. I when I'm when I'm touch dubbing I will. I'll use a, a tacky wax. Mm -hmm. But I usually have a little cup with a piece of paper wet paper towel in it or a sponge, but um, so now I'm gonna just clear that out of the way and start dubbing forward. I'm gonna take it up to the to the top of the dubbing ball and hopefully those those claws will collapse a little bit. That looks all right. What the hell? So what, I, what I say, uh, I, um, again, I'm making reference to, to Ian Martin. I, I, I don't worship the man by any means, but, I, but I, uh, I have learned a lot from him over the years. And one of the things, one of the best pieces of advice he gave me many years ago was we all we always tie for example we always tie our our caddis larva on a curved hook because why because it looks better to us the truth is when that caddis larva is in the water they're constantly moving straightening out so you could take that same green caddis larva and just tie it on a sprout hook and you got better hooking capabilities, but we like, it makes us feel better when we reach in our, in our box to pull out that caddis and it's got that little natural curve to it. And that's, that's why everyone does it. Um, one of my good friends, Jason King, he has, he has gotten completely away from curved hooks. He doesn't like their hook setting capabilities. He, he ties all of his larva, his chronomids, everything on those, um, Sprout hooks. Oh shoot, you know what? I forgot one I forgot one thing, but I can't go back now. Normally what the the the, the recipe calls for now I'm buggered, I might as well just go home. <laughs> <laughs> the recipe calls for this little beard just before that dubbing ball ahead of the and and what I would what I would use in this case is is a just a little bit of this rabbit's foot and it's just it's just a short little and if you if you look at a crayfish they actually have this goofy little it's just breather stuff it's it's gills I would assume I forgot that this fly won't catch a fish with a shit but <laughs> but I'd be uh, I, I'd be remiss if I didn't if I didn't come back and tell you so.
I have to do some editing on this, aren't you, David? <laughs> no. <laughs> censorship. No. <laughs> you have to put a censorship note at the beginning. It's a family show. Okay. So now I'm going to I'm going to okay. take this sir, take doing? this forward. Start with one full wrap on the back, and then nice and even. And I'm going to get right into the uh, right into the the eyes there, and I'll just secure that out of the front. commitment this year to tie a whole bunch of flies with with dryer lint. Every time I go to the dryer and I pull that friggin' yeah. lint screen out. It looks so <laughs> good. Some of its different Master? colors yeah. I did, I did, yeah. I got a I, I, I have this this beautiful uh, Oxford jacket that my my friends and family got me for my fiftieth fiftieth birthday. And in the pocket lining was a whole pile of loose uh, wool fibers, just the perfect size for a caddis. And there are all kinds of cool mottled colors, greens and and uh, various olives and browns. So I every day I'd come in and grab a handful and stick them up my my thing and I and I tied I tied flies for it. So I call it the Oxford caddis. But but uh, yeah I keep saying I'm gonna and I always end up throwing the lint away but sometimes if you if you got the right colors in there you get the most wonderful dubbing colors and it's cheap. I can put it in here and package it and sell it for five bucks a bag. I call it, I call it Rob's Custom Blend, yeah. <laughs> but there is a fly. There is there is a number of guys that, that, that have this. I know Graham Bristow uh, swears by it um, and me being of Scottish descent, you know, whatever it takes to, to save a buck. My grandfather would, would be smiling at me in his grave. So I put again a substantial noodle on there and I'm going to cross wrap this a few times to, to get the to, to uh, get, I want the bottom well covered and then I'm going to add, add in a little bit. <coughs> That's right. Yeah, that's that's it. Ed. That's the the idea. We Ed and I had a have had a number of great conversations about presentation versus versus uh, profile versus color, and uh, and um, I, I think with a fly like this, it, the, the fish don't. They're not. They're not scrutinizing it that much. I want a little bit more on there just to just to make that a little more robust. Um, and Ed told me a story. I don't know if you read it or if you were with them. The guy that that fish tied the red no, it was ma fuchsia. mayfly. It was a fuchsia. Fuchsia. And it was a Hendrickson. And okay. I was with them. And on, uh, the, on the bat and kill. And caught fish on a fuchsia colored fly. A couple of years ago, um, a friend of a friend of uh, Mike's and mine, he's a physician, um, Adam uh, Wilson. Wilson, yeah. He, I had guided him during the day and we had a we had a friggin' dynamite day. We were we were uh, up top and we'd hooked we'd hooked four fish in that twenty inch plus range and lost them all before he finally landed one. But it was just one of those nights where he landed one about 18 inches, then he hooked these four other fish, and, and then finally landed one. But that night, I I, I left, because we were done, and he went downstream, got to the pool, 
and there was four or five big fish rising. He didn't have much in the way of trout flies. He had this blue pseudo mayfly thing, but it was blue. He kept the fly to show me, and he took one of these. He took one of these big fish off the surface with a, with a blue mayfly. So, yeah, it's it's who knows. Um, this again is just a little uh, the the it's sub. It's been referred to as the uh, as the mohawk, but it's just again a little little more animation in the front of the fly. I'll back. Come in and cut that off, and I'm just going to put just a little bit more dubbing to cover that head up, and then we'll. I think that's uh, tie on better. There, a lot of people use the feathers split. at the top there, and it split them. <clears throat> they get all messed up and tangled. And I'm just going to come in behind the uh, the mohawk and whip finish it, get it standing up just a bit. I whip finish the shit out of my flies because I don't use uh, I don't use uh, head cement very often. Now you want to do this in in segments until you get it right. It's not quite enough. That looks good. Boy, that's going to fool them. And there is the, the Dave Whitlock. Close enough. Near enough. Crayfish. Beautiful, man. Yeah. Mm -hmm.